today's video, I'm in my garage going over a garage strength video to see whether or not these five drills actually make any sense physiologically, and if any of them actually adhere to the principles of motor learning, and transfer of skill and skill specificity. Now I found this video and it's one of the most popular videos on the channel and I watched the first recommendation and quite frankly, it was utterly ridiculous. So I'm just gonna react to these live and give my input and explain whether or not these drills actually would transfer to improve speed or if they're just simply strength and conditioning coaching folklore, like 99% of the nonsense, ridiculous drills strength and conditioning coaches do. So let's get into it. Let's get into the first drill. Exercise number one, wall sprints. Now the first drill doesn't adhere to any sort of principles of motor learning it merely resembles the movement of sprinting. And a lot of extremely misinformed strength and conditioning coaches think that if you practice a particular skill or do a particular drill that kind of resembles another movement like sprinting, that it's going to have a positive transfer on the movement like sprinting. But we've known since the early 1960s that skills must be practiced specifically in order to have a positive transfer. Now leaning up against a wall and driving your knees in the air is about as similar to practicing the trumpet by blowing bubbles. It's not even close. Not only will doing this drill have no positive impact on sprinting, it's pretty much just gonna be a waste of your time and accumulate wear and tear with no improvements in strength, no improvements in cardiovascular improvement, and no improvement in the skill of actually sprinting. Sprinting. So the first drill garage strength shows here is complete utter nonsense. I don't know where you come up with this, where you even can consider physiologically this is a logical thing to do to improve sprinting because it's not sprinting. So he claims with almost no physiology supporting this that by leaning up against the wall and driving your knees, it's going to help you explode out of the stance in a sprint. But the thing is it's not. Do you wanna know why? Because you're not practicing exploding out of a stance in a sprint. It's got absolutely nothing to do with sprinting. It's probably the most useless drill I think I've ever seen in strength and conditioning. That second key drill is a 15 yard sprint. Well, the second drill actually makes sense. You're practicing sprinting. You're focused on the start. You're practicing the specific skill of sprinting. So 15 yard sprints, yes, that is going to improve your speed. If your speed is being measured by a controlled sprint test like this, keep in mind, you will notice if you practice 15 yard sprints, you will get faster at that. But whether or not this transfers to the field is a completely another story. Sprinting from a start in a straight line is a different skill than sprinting down the field to catch a pass or sprinting down the basketball court or sprinting down a soccer field. So if you're being tested in a type of sprint in a straight line sprint with a start like this, then yeah, practicing the sprint is going to improve your speed but only in that particular testing environment. So he's partially correct. Yes, practicing this, you're gonna improve your speed with a 15 yard sprint, which is going to transfer to slightly longer sprints like a 40 yard dash. But whether or not that 40 yard dash speed transfers to the field is a completely different story. That third drill we like to use is they stumble reflex a skips, okay? Another drill that is just completely ridiculous skipping is not sprinting and you know he's trying to say and you could tell that he kind of like stumbles on his words because he doesn't really know why the hell he's doing this drill he has no evidence or no reasoning on how the nervous system adapts on um, physiologically the adaptations that occur that will make you sprint faster you could tell he's just spewing bullshit and folklore to feel the rhythm of movement to feel the dynamic blah 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 He's, it's just word vomit to make it seem like he knows what the hell he's talking about, but I can guarantee you doing the skip is not going to improve your speed. It's also not going to improve your reflexes. Your reflexes to a particular activity, again, are gonna be specific to that activity. Your reaction speed is largely based on your nervous system and neurological adaptations to specific skills and also in specific environments. For instance, if you only practice throwing passes without a live defense and people trying to tackle you, practicing in a closed environment is not going to transfer well over to an environment where you have linebackers and defensive ends trying to sack you. Even though it is the same skill, you really have to practice these skills in the particular environment in order to have maximum positive transfer. But doing a skip like this on field turf is not going to improve your reaction time when you go to do a sprint test because it may seem similar. It is not specific. Therefore, the skill of reacting with this particular skip movement is not going to transfer to your skill reacting when you go to do a sprint or when you're tested for a sprint. That fourth drill, 
plate snatch to box. This is another reflexive strength drill that we love to utilize. Again, this is a dangerous, dumb, ridiculous, non-transferable skill. This is the equivalent of playing the trumpet while balancing on one leg and balancing an apple on your head, thinking that it's gonna make you better at playing a trumpet. This is just adding a bunch of unnecessary complexity that does not transfer to anything in the real world. You cannot train reflexive movement. Reflexes are activity specific, again. And he says you start to lose various primal reflexes that help us run faster. It's just a bunch of word vomit. Absolute complete nonsense. This is probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't know why these coaches think this stuff because first of all, none of this stuff has ev any evidence behind it. The thing is they use these exercises with athletes and then Every now and then the athlete does very well and they attribute their success to these stupid, ridiculous movements. Meanwhile, the athlete does very well in spite of wasting their time and potentially accumulating wear and tear on their joints with these useless movements. And like I said, your reflexes are gonna be activity specific. So improving your reflexes with a silly exercise, I'm gonna transfer to your reflexes in other activities. It's ridiculous, it's nonsense. That last drill, this is the best drill for running at top end speed, the wicket drills. Again, no, it's not gonna transfer because this is a completely different skill. Your body is adjusting and adapting and changing its body positioning, improving upright posture, etc., to go over these little wickets or whatever he calls them, but that's not gonna transfer to sprinting without these obstacles in place. You're gonna learn to run a particular way to overcome this obstacle. But when you go back to sprinting and in, into a different environment, say it's like a sprint test or even on the field, those obstacles aren't in your place, you're not gonna carry over those mechanics without those obstacles in place. This is more strength and conditioning folklore. They think that if they place some kind of obstacle and some kind of drill, it's gonna train a movement pattern that becomes second nature to you. And you're gonna carry over that thing you learned, avoiding these obstacles or working around these obstacles onto the field or onto the test or whatever. But that's just not how your nervous system transfers skill. It's complete utter nonsense. Most of it is folklore. And again, they're working with high level athletes that are gonna perform well anyway. So in their mind, they're substantiating these ridiculous, horrible drills that just waste your time. So I would say out of those five drills, the only one that makes sense is actually sprinting. Because sprinting, again, is a specific skill. And if you want to improve a specific skill, you must practice that skill specifically. If I were a professional juggler, in my act, I had to juggle bowling pins, but instead I decided to juggle iPads. Then when I went to juggle bowling pins, I would do very poor. Now when you use an example like that, it makes perfect sense, but it's exactly the same thing when you're trying to do stupid drills like this to improve your performance as an athlete, or improve, say, sprinting or explosiveness, etc. Speed, power, and explosiveness, they're not general skills. They are specific skills, and all of these drills would be a complete waste of your time in best case scenario. In most cases, they're probably just accumulating wear and tear. It's gonna manifest itself on the field. Now, this isn't my opinion. This is based on the last, geez, 70 years of motor learning research, which began in the late 1940s, early 1950s. But for some reason, this information seems to evade most strength and conditioning coaches. Maybe they're not taught it in the curriculum, I don't know. But we've got millions of athletes wasting their time, accumulating wear and tear, doing complete utter nonsense like this with an unsubstantiated belief that it's somehow gonna make them a better athlete and transfer on the field. But take my advice, don't waste your time doing this. Use safe, efficient, effective strength training to make your muscles as strong as possible, such as doing my golden era system, the link's in the description for that, and then practice the skills of your sport completely separate from the gym, separate from strength and conditioning, and that is what's gonna make you the most high-performing, effective athlete on the field. So if you wanna learn more real, truthful information on the subject of exercise, exercise science, skill transfer, diet, nutrition, etc., hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification icon so you don't end up wasting your time doing silly nonsense like this.